everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you the best things to do in Berlin, including some of the most touristy things and some of the hidden gems and alternative things to do in Berlin uh, in the next three days. So this video will focus on three days to spend in Berlin, so basically a long weekend. We visited Berlin in August and we were so lucky with the weather, it was really warm. Actually, on some days it was rather hot, uh, so the temperature exceeded 30 degrees Celsius, which was honestly amazing for exploring and spending the days outside. We stayed at a hotel called TSH Berlin, which stands for the Student Hotel, but it's not a hotel just for the students. Honestly, we love this chain and we stayed in TSH in Vienna as well earlier this year. It was amazing. It's like a boutique hotel with a really good location and perfect internet and even a co-working space in case you need to have some work done. I'll leave a link to the hotel down in the description below and in the pinned comment. When we landed in Berlin, it took us just under one hour to get to TSH Hotel from the airport. TSH is located next to Alexanderplatz. So we bought a single ticket for €3.80. And the next day in the morning, we actually picked up our travel card, a Berlin welcome card, which was valid for three days. Um, we collaborated with Visit Berlin for that. Thank you so much, Visit Berlin. So what it is, it's basically an unlimited transport card and it's perfect for people who want to travel all around Berlin and use the public transport a lot. This card also gives you discounts for different attractions and museums. For example, it gives you a discount for a DDR museum, which is one of the best alternative things to do in Berlin. And we really enjoy this museum. And there are plenty of things you can learn about DDR and even watch some interactive movies and installations. One of the first things we did and have seen in Berlin was this beautiful promenade that stretches along the river Spree. So uh, this promenade started pretty much close to our hotel. I'll, I'll show it to you on the map. And it went all the way to the city center. Um, it was quite a short, I would say, maybe 20 minute walk. And we've seen a lot of lovely restaurants and cafes on the way. We just arrived to Humboldt Forum. Normally it has a terrace, a rooftop terrace, which is available free of charge. And you just can go up basically to the rooftop and view a nice um, panoramic view of Berlin. But unfortunately it's closed for renovation just for the two weeks. <laughs> so basically during the time we are here. Uh, so unfortunately we won't be able to visit it. And from here you can also see the Fernsehturm or the TV tower. It looks very, very beautiful. We have a very nice golden hour right now and the light is stunning. It's also really hard to believe that this building, the Humboldt Forum, was uh, built in 2020. <laughs> it's actually a new build. Uh, it was built on the place of an old Berlin palace, but the palace was demolished in 2009. And in 2013, they started building a new palace here. And now it's finally finished. Uh, that's why it looks so new. The rest of the buildings on the Museum Insel or Museum Island are much older, of course. Um, there's also the famous, one of the most famous universities of Germany, the Humboldt Universität Berlin. And on this part of the street, you can actually see the Brandenburger Tor, um, the gate, the Brandenburg Gate. The name of the street is Unter den Linden, and it's one of the most um, important streets in Berlin. It took us around 15-20 minutes to get to the Brandenburg Gate, and we got there just in time for the sunset. And I must tell you, it looked absolutely stunning during sunset, so it's probably the best time to go there to take pictures, but of course it's crowded. We actually went there next day as well as part of our tour, but it was just as crowded as it was during the sunset. Okay, we took a very short underground ride, um, four stops to around eight minutes, and we didn't need to wait for the underground at all. It arrived instantly, so we were super lucky, not that the gaps are super huge. Um, and we are currently heading to try uh, one, probably the most famous kebab in Berlin. Mustafa Gemüse Kebab. Let's see how large is the queue. Okay, so 
it's been one hour and 15 minutes at currently 10 30 we are still queuing and i feel like we still have probably 60 to 70 percent of the queue in front of us Okay. So Pepe thinks we're halfway, but I think yeah. we're less than halfway because the queue turns a little bit. What do you think? I'm an optimist. Okay, all right. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I'll let you know when we're gonna get the queue up. Okay, so it's been two hours and 35 minutes and we got the kebabs and woo, that was probably the longest wait in our entire lives. And of course the kebabs were delicious but definitely not worth the wait. So the next day we actually spent working remotely so we got free around 6.30 p.m. and we headed to a very exciting place which was just 10 to 15 minutes walking away from our hotel called Hotmark 25 or Hotmark uh, 25. Um, it's a really cool open air bar slash street food market although I must say that food options are a little bit limited and the queues are massive especially on friday evening but overall it's a really fun place there's a lot of street art it's a great place to spend an evening with your friends or with your significant other if you keep walking for 15 more minutes you will reach east side gallery so the east side gallery is a large chunk of berlin wall uh, that is still remaining standing till our days and it was transformed into a huge open air gallery and um, the entrance is of course free of charge because it's just located outside on the streets a lot of people are just walking to their final destination and there are also a lot of tourists just admiring art and there are some really famous um, art pieces this one probably is the most famous one I would say it's a must visit a place in Berlin. Uh, another must visit activity this time is actually a cycling tour around Berlin. Hello guys, good morning. It's our third day in Berlin and our first actually full day in the city. And today we are heading, heading to uh, Kultur Brauerei um, from where our cycling tour around Berlin will depart. So we had actually um, quite a huge dil dilemma choosing between two tours because um, I wanted to take the alternative tour as well and I wanted to take obviously the classic Berlin tour by bike to learn more about the history of the city because the history of Berlin is just mind-blowing uh, I decided that we're gonna opt in for the classic Berlin tour so here we go we are going there now so we got there fairly quickly and this is Kultur Brauerei, which is a very large creative space. There are also different company offices there and a lot of cycling tours depart from here. So like 1890 to 1910. Uh, this is sort of the first big building room uh, that's on top of it. And they would drive around the wall, they would lift this, these speakers up over top. They would blast Western news and rock and roll, right? The Rolling Stones and the Beatles into after the tour, I kind of regretted that uh, we didn't take a tour in German uh, because I do speak German and I could have translated it for Jose uh, just because it would be interesting to uh, learn about the history of a 
of Berlin from a perspective of uh, a Berliner, ideally someone who was born and raised in Berlin. Unfortunately, our, our guide didn't know much about Berlin. He moved to um, the city a few years ago from Canada and he didn't know much about the history of the city, even though he was our guide. So um, I would probably recommend taking an alternative Berlin tour instead that would tell you about street art and some of the beaten path locations uh, and maybe go on a walking tour with an authorized guide instead. We are currently walking um, a very beautiful street called Kashtanian Alley. There are a lot of businesses, a lot of shops, just a very beautiful place. We decided to stop for a coffee and a very beautiful and Instagrammable cafe called Frank Cafe. Um, it's pretty stunning inside and they also have food until 3 p.m. on Saturdays. Our next destination was Checkpoint Charlie and it was located slightly far away from uh, Cafe Frank. So we decided to rent an electric scooter and it was a pleasure uh, riding around Berlin in an electric scooter because there are dedicated cycling lanes and it's honestly very, very easy. So Checkpoint Charlie is the last surviving checkpoint between East and West Berlin and it's not actually a working checkpoint anymore of course uh, it was just kept there for history and it's connected to very sad history of Germany a lot of people lost their lives trying to cross from East Berlin to West Berlin a few steps away from the actual checkpoint, there is a museum of a small exposition about the history of Berlin Wall and about the checkpoint Charlie. And there is a bit that is free, you can read a little bit more on this wall. Then we took underground and got to the place called Klunkenkranich. So Klunkenkranich is one of the best rooftop bars in Berlin. It's not really a nightclub because it closes fairly early, but it's not really a bar as well because it has DJs and live music. But honestly, it's an amazing place with a great vibe. It's a perfect place to meet with friends, but uh, there is um, a fee for the entrance. I think we paid something like seven euros per person and it gets really busy, especially on Saturday night. But the views from there are amazing and you can also get some food there. Um, the food options are rather limited, but they're great. I don't think you can actually reserve a table. I think it comes on a first come, first serve basis. And there is always a queue outside Klukunkanich, but we arrived around 6 p.m. and it took us around 15 minutes to get inside. Of course, it is a much longer queue if you arrive later. After visiting Klunkenkranich, we decided to walk around Kreuzberg, uh, a very up-and-coming um, area which is considered pretty hipster now because there are a lot of uh, nice bars and restaurants there. Um, and uh, we walked actually all the way to our hotel, uh, which was, I think, around 45 to 50 minutes walking. <laughs> Last night we got uh, to the hotel pretty late, so we decided to sleep a little bit longer on Sunday and got to Mauer Park around 11 a.m. So every Sunday there is a fair happening in Mauer Park, uh, which is basically a large flea market combined with a market that sells a lot of souvenirs and just in general really cool things. And there is also a food market. So if you want to do some shopping in Berlin on Sunday, this is a place to go because most shops um, and actually some of the restaurants even are closed in uh, Germany generally on Sundays so um, usually markets like these are the best bet if you want to do some shopping and also you can find some pretty unique uh, things in this market because that's what you usually find in flea markets. Then we headed to the House of Small Wonders, um, which is a very famous and popular restaurant in Berlin. Honestly, 10 out of 10, I definitely recommend. It was absolutely delicious. The area where the restaurant is located is very beautiful. Um, after visiting a few areas in Berlin, I would say this, is, this area is probably my favorite. It's very green, the act architecture is beautiful, it's very quiet, and there are a lot of nice cafes and restaurants and even a nice kind of shopping mall and creative space are called Hackische Höfe. 
So today's Sunday, so obviously everything is closed because shops generally cl are closed in Germany on Sundays. But you can imagine that any other time of the week, um, there's a lot of life here and a lot of different independent shops, cafes and restaurants. Our next destination was just around the corner. It was located at Rosenthaler Straße 39 and um, it's basically a lovely courtyard. There is also Haus Schwarzenberg and Anne Frank Museum and a few shops and bars and cafes. So there is a lot of stuff going on, but it's famous for its street art. But, um, yeah, enjoy the place because it's definitely unique. And there are also places like this one. So if you climb the stairs on the top floor, there will be a studio and a shop. And it's actually not allowed to film inside and take pictures because um, the stairs are very narrow and you create small traffic jams. But I only saw the sign that it's not allowed to take pictures and videos after I started filming. So don't be like me. Um, again, this place is a must visit um, place in Berlin and one of the best alternative places. Another must-visit activity in Berlin is trying a currywurst. Currywurst is a traditional German sausage and you can get it pretty much everywhere. There are, of course, chains that are preferred by Berliners, but honestly, I didn't see much uh, difference. Well, I didn't taste much difference. So it's kind of good everywhere and it's a good alternative um, to uh, like proper lunch, especially if you're in a rush or on a budget. So after a quick lunch, we spent um, a few hours just walking around Berlin city center. We discovered another art fair, uh, which was surprisingly open, despite the fact that it was a Sunday. And then we headed to Gendarmenmarkt. It's 32 degrees now and we are melting. Uh, well, I am melting, but it's fine. As a Mexican, he's always um, pretty fine with any sort of heat, but me, oh my God, I'm melting. Then we decided to walk 45 minutes to our next destination, the restaurant Klerchens, which we booked for dinner. Honestly, it's one of the last remaining surviving ballrooms. Um, it has historical interior and it looked absolutely beautiful inside. Uh, but because of the weather, we actually dined in the garden outside. Everything was very good and not too expensive, so I would definitely recommend this place and I'd say it earned its place on the list of the best restaurants in Berlin to visit. Uh, then it was time for us actually to head back to the hotel and pick up our bags, but on the way we discovered a very beautiful area of Berlin in terms of architecture. Uh, this area is also home to a lot of different boutiques. You can find it uh, by searching for Lululemon or Kos, as these stores are located there. It's also just a few minutes away from Alexanderplatz, one of the most uh, significant squares in Germany. The square is not the prettiest in terms of architecture, but it has a lot of different shops and shopping malls, and it's always very busy. So, these are our last hours in Berlin. We have a flight to catch tomorrow at 6 a.m., super early, so we're trying to go to sleep today quite early as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In case you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below. And see you guys in the next video. Bye!